I receive a lot of emails about everything that I talk about on this channel, about obviously this is postural restoration related. Uh, and one of, the, one of the things that people are most insistent upon is not that they're disagreeing with me, but they often insist that they are the opposite of the left AIC pattern. So the left AIC pattern is when a pelvis on the left side has rotated forward compared to the right side. So here's my left, here's my right. It's rotated forward compared to the right. And this, in general, 98% of the time, will, will orient the entire pelvis to the right. The pelvis and the, sacrum, uh, and the lumbar spine to the right, and it shifts our weight to the right, and then our upper body has to counter-rotate back to the left. But even with counter-rotation, we're still off to the right. If you, if you uh, draw a line down the midline of my body, you have the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Everything is going on, all our left rotation, even our head, neck, torso, we're still on the right side. We've never actually shifted to the left, and we get stuck there, okay? That's what we're talking about. A lot of people, however, for various reasons, think that they are the opposite pattern. They think that their right pelvis is forward compared to the left. Now, that would be the right AIC pattern. In fact, the right AIC pattern is what we're trying to reestablish because that would be the proper position of the pelvis if you're actually on your left foot and in the left hemisphere. But I have yet to see anybody who tests, who I see normally, and comes in with a pelvis that's rotated forward on the right side compared to the left. Now, there could be a, a bunch of reasons that people think that their pelvis is the right AIC pattern. They may feel that their pelvis is oriented to the left. Now, again, there is a slight chance that that could be true, but if I tested them, they would still be in the left AIC pattern. So the left AIC pattern and orientation are two different things. This is the left AIC pattern with a rightward oriented pelvis. If something were to happen in the sacrum, I'm sorry, in the lumbar spine, like it twisted back to the left, for some reason, which would probably be pathologic and that would be probably some serious SI joint issues. Could it be in a left AIC pattern and with the pelvis oriented, centered, or to the, to the left, but still be in the left AIC pattern? It, it can happen, but again, I have yet to see that, but I do know that it can happen, so I'm not even gonna talk about it because I've never experienced it. But what most likely happens is they, there is a difference in when a body is at completely at rest, lying down on a table so that gravity is not causing spinal erector or any of your uh, extensor muscles to turn on to keep you upright against gravity. Being on a table and being standing upright are completely different experiences for the human body because you have to contend with gravity. The moment you get up and have to contend with gravity, that position will, will that state of being dealing with gravity will be different than how your body will present when it's at rest. So if you're standing up and looking at yourself and saying, now see this pelvis is forward, you are standing up against gravity, you are not at rest. We are, we are testing people in a resting state. And when people come in here and they are in a resting state, their pelvis every single time is in a left AIC pattern. And again, if you want to know why, it's because we have that bigger right diaphragm neurologically, brain-wise, we're built to be right dominant. That's just the way it is. I have a video about that, so you can look that up. However, so what is the testing? Now, the other thing is if they lie down, I don't want to get into that one. Just if you're standing up, all bets are off because muscle activity has to start. And depending on compensations, depending on past injuries, depending on, well, there's a lot of factors. It could seem like your pelvis is, is forward on the right side, but it's, I'm telling you, it's, it's not in a resting state. It will not be, and that's what we're testing. Uh, could it look like the pelvis is rotated forward on the right? 
it can look like that sim simply because you have too much muscle activity going on and you're contending with gravity. But in a resting state, when you're lying down flat, resting, taking gravity out of it, I have yet to see a right AIC pattern. I have yet to see a right side of the pelvis forward compared to the left. That's what we want to establish. That's why we want to use that left hamstring to pull you to the left. That's why we want to sense the left heel. That's why we want the right arch to get you to the left. That's why we want the left ZOA to rotate your spine to the left. We need to get you lateralized into the left hemisphere and that is, so that's what we're trying to get you, is to write AIC pattern. But no one walks in as a right AIC pattern. Again, go back to the other video because of the muscular issues. Okay, now, how do we know? What is the testing? When you have a pelvis that's forward on the left, no, forget it, let me backtrack. Here's a leg, it's a left leg. Left leg, left pelvis. If your pelvis is truly centered, okay, and I lie you down, this, pel this left leg should have the ability to adduct, A-D-D, adduct, and abduct because the pelvis is neutral. If a pelvis is, and this is just basic biomechanics, this is not a PRI thing. If a pelvis is forward on one side, which would be the swing phase of gait, at that point, that leg has the ability to abduct but it loses the ability to adduct because it, you, you get, it, it just doesn't happen. The bony arrangement between the femur and the pelvis and the acetabulum does not allow adduction. That's just biomechanics. On the, on the right side, because the right side of the pelvis is back and it's in stance phase of gait, this leg does have, the right leg has the ability to adduct, but it doesn't have the ability to abduct. So it's the exact opposite. On the left side, you can AB, abduct, but you can't adduct in the left AIC pattern. On the right side, still in the left, getting caught on my microphone wire. On the right side, left AIC pattern, remember right, left side forward, right side back, the right leg will adduct, it will not abduct. And that's what you see every single time that someone comes in here. Now, sometimes you will see a pelvis that's forward on both sides so that the test will be a little bit uh, off. Uh, that mostly happens, um, from my experience, to people in New York City, people who have way too much stress, too much uh, noise pollution, too much visual activity, just too much of everything. They are tense and anxious. Now, do you see it on people? You do, but it's not as common as the, just the left AIC pattern. Okay, so if I were to, and so what would this test look like? Here I go. Obviously, you cannot self-test yourself. You cannot self-test yourself. Just keep that in mind. Because you'll be generating your own muscular activity and that will change the test. And also, you just can't because you have to make sure everything's aligned properly and stabilized. You'll cheat, so you can't do it. All right, now, if I lie down on my right side, I'm, I'm assuming I'm a left AIC pattern. When you bring this left leg back into line with the hip, into extension, the leg doesn't go down. It'll just stay like this. Sometimes it's worse. Depends on the person. But this is a positive test in the sense that it will not adduct. So this is the normal representation. You'll see a picture. I'm going to show that picture right here. That is a typical test result of someone that I first meet with. That left leg will not adduct. However, it will abduct. Okay, now on the right side, typically in the left AIC pattern, you bring the right leg back in line and it goes down. Why? Because when a pelvis is forward on the left and back on the right, that equates with right stance and in that position the right leg can adduct, it will not abduct. And that's what you'll see in this next picture. You will see the right leg AD adducting 
while the left side does not. And that is how I know someone is in the left AIC pattern and not in the right AIC pattern. Again, I have yet, in seven years of doing this, I have yet to, to, to meet with someone whose right leg did not go down and whose left leg did go down. It just doesn't happen. Uh, so that's how I know when people insist that they're a right AIC pattern. I know I can't convince them otherwise, because that's, that's probably what they feel, and that's what they see visually. But I'm just presenting uh, what PRI teaches and what I've seen over seven years of doing this with hundreds of people. Uh, I have yet to see a true right AIC pattern. Uh, and that's why I kind of feel pretty confident at this point in time. Uh, in saying to p tell people that they're really not the AI, a right ASC pattern, and that is why you still use the left hamstring to get rid of lateral pelvic tilts, or as, you know, it's the first step. Uh, that's why, because people say, well, should I use my right hamstring? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's just going to reinforce the pattern that you're already in. Uh, that's why you use that left hamstring, because we have to get the body into a right AIC pattern. We have to get you from this left AIC pattern to a right AIC pattern, which is getting the body to the left side. Uh, so hope that can clear some things up for people who are still confused about it. Uh, but we do have objective testing to a body at rest that tells us that you are highly likely to be a left AIC pattern and almost not ever a right AIC pattern.